Welcome to Protocol Deviations, Documenting, Managing, and Reporting. My name is Marla Helley. I'll be your trainer for today's session. Here on the slide is just a little bit about me. I have worked as both a CRA and a project manager for both sponsor and CROs, as well as a research nurse at academic centers and a private practice and a director of a research department at a private oncology practice as well. This particular training is always one that I enjoy sharing because I think that protocol deviations are one of those challenges that we face as clinical research professionals, whether we're working at the site, if we are CRAs managing our investigative sites, ensuring that one, that they understand the protocol fully and minimize the protocol deviations, but then also looking at a bigger perspective, how do we help ensure that we prevent deviations in the first place? Being able to put into practice some good training and the ability to potentially identify risk to our protocol as either the sponsor or CRO, and then also focusing on these risks as part of our training to ensure that we are helping our sites to remember to collect these particular procedures or to avoid overlooking these procedures in our protocol, but then also understanding the significance of a protocol deviation, how that can impact the quality of the trial as well as impacting subject safety. Today, we're going to look at the following learning objectives for this module. We're going to describe the key components of a protocol deviation, including documentation and the reporting requirements. We're going to look at stakeholders when it comes to owning a protocol deviation and also the considerations with their reporting when it comes to deviations that have occurred at the site. In particular, we'll look at the role that the sponsor has, as well as the IRB, and then also the clinical investigator. We're going to discuss a process that we can proactively identify, track, and evaluate deviations for greater effectiveness in study management, and also how we can implement corrective actions to help when a deviation becomes really part of a practice. So how can we help prevent future occurrence? So we're going to talk about root cause analysis and a CAPA. The challenges with protocol deviations can be that, one, how are we going to consider a deviation? So there's variability in sometimes how sponsors are going to view a protocol deviation compared to the investigator or site, and also with regulatory authorities. And so that sometimes can be where the challenge starts, how someone is perceiving this definition of what a protocol deviation is. And we know that protocol deviations are a fact of life, that we will not see a perfect clinical study, that we are involving humans and that we also can make mistakes. We know our patients may have situations that may cause a person to, one, not appropriately take medication when they are supposed to, miss a visit, not intentionally, but it could be due to a circumstance. Or we have someone at the site that unfortunately misunderstood perhaps how to complete a procedure or the timing of the procedure or didn't understand the significance of how this procedure is part of the overall endpoint for the study and is going to be used for analysis. So our objectives then as the sponsor as well as even at the site or for the vendor, the CRO, is to make sure that we focus on those matters that matter, that matter the most. So by focusing our efforts on those that matter the most, it means that we're going to look at those procedures 
that ensure subject safety and our data integrity.